Thanks to the popularity of TV crime dramas, we might have some unrealistic expectations about what it takes to solve a murder. We expect the handsome and brilliant investigator to find all of the elusive pieces of evidence at the scene, catch that obscure clue that's revealed during the autopsy, put all those details together to come up with the suspect, hunt down and capture the killer, and bring them swiftly to justice, all within a neat 60-minute episode. Dubbed the CSI effect, experts worry that the general public and even juries don't understand the realities of solving a crime. So what really goes on during the crime autopsy? How does a real-life CSI solve murders? TV dramas like CSI tend to make solving a murder look like a piece of cake, and most of what the general public knows about crime autopsies comes from those sensational whodunit shows and high-profile celebrity deaths. But in reality, there's actually a ton of work and expertise that goes into determining how someone died and if foul play was involved. And that work starts long before the body finds its way to the morgue for an autopsy. The autopsy is the internal and external examination of a body after death, when a trained pathologist uses a variety of surgical techniques, laboratory tests, and other strategies to determine the exact cause and circumstances of the death. Even though the College of American Pathologists recommends that an autopsy be completed for every death, that doesn't always happen. Sometimes the cause of death seems obvious, or the family declines to pay the three to five thousand dollars to have an autopsy performed. But when a death is suspicious or the police suspect foul play, an autopsy is an essential part of the investigation and can provide important legal evidence that can help solve the crime or determine who is responsible for the victim's death. On TV, the heroic detectives always seem to be the ones to find the key piece of evidence at the scene. But in reality, it's actually the same medical examiner who will later perform the autopsy that has the training and expertise to assess the scene, notice the important details, and determine what evidence should be collected. The medical examiner is a leading member of the investigation team, and they actually help organize the scene and coordinate the investigation. They're instrumental in defining the perimeter of the crime scene, securing the evidence, and coordinating and tracking the activities of many other people involved in the investigation. It's their job to uncover if a crime was committed and to determine how the location and the position of the body could be linked to the cause of death. For example, if an elderly man with a history of heart conditions is found dead in the snowbank next to a shovel outside of his home, it's the medical examiner who will make the call that he likely suffered a heart attack while shoveling the snow. The medical examiner's job actually starts the moment they get the call informing them of a suspicious death, and there's a mountain of work involved before they even get to the autopsy. In fact, scene investigation is often more important than the autopsy itself, and a thorough investigation may reveal the cause of death before the body even gets to the morgue. For example, an autopsy on a healthy 30-year-old with no medical history and no toxicology findings may not be able to provide a firm cause of death. Only by attending the scene and noticing the body laying in a pool of water next to an electrical outlet with a screwdriver stuck in it can the medical examiner know for sure how the subject died. As soon as the medical examiner gets the call that the body has been found, their work starts even before they get to the scene. They start to gather as much information about the body as possible. At the very least, they try to determine the approximate age and gender of the deceased and if there's any early evidence of foul play. If the deceased has already been identified and the family has been notified, the examiner will also start to gather a medical and personal history. Next, the examiner will get ready to head to the scene and will gather all the tools and equipment they need to complete their investigation. Among the many important items in their toolkit, they'll make sure they have an apron, gloves, hair and shoe covers, and a face shield to protect the scene from contamination, and to protect themselves. Depending on the location of the scene and the weather, they might bring along things like flashlights, rain gear, bug spray, and sunscreen to keep themselves as comfortable as possible during the often grueling and always meticulous process. They'll make sure to have a good supply of swabs, containers, and plastic bags to collect important pieces of evidence. Most importantly, they'll bring along tools to help them carefully document the scene. Pen and paper, a tape recorder, and a camera. The medical examiner's first job is to determine if a crime was committed at the death scene. Every death scene is a potential crime scene until proven otherwise. The first and most important rule of crime scene investigation is to not disturb or contaminate the scene. The examiner must wear protective equipment and avoid sitting on any surfaces or leaning on any walls. After making sure the scene is safe and secure, the medical examiner will begin their systematic and thorough examination of the scene and attempt to answer some very important questions. Like, did the death occur at this location? Can the death be attributed to natural causes? Is anything out of place at the scene? And are there any signs of violence or foul play? If foul play is suspected, the medical examiner will guide the investigations in further processing the scene, directing them to collect latent impressions, trace evidence, and anything else relevant to the investigation. 
like possible murder weapons or medications found nearby. This is yet another misconception about crime scene investigation that comes from watching too many crime dramas. Although the medical examiner plays a lead role in this stage of the investigation, their job is to observe a great deal but to actually do very little. Their four major tasks are note-taking, videography, photography, and sketching. The rest of the hands-on work will be done by other investigators and crime scene technicians at the medical examiner's direction. The medical examiner will take great care to document every detail of the death scene, starting from the moment they are notified of the death. Their highly detailed notes will start with details about the date, time, and method of notification and any details known about the deceased at the time. When they arrive on the scene, they'll document how they got there and when and what personnel are on the scene. Then they'll turn their attention to crafting a full scene description, noting everything from the layout of the scene to the furniture and structures nearby to even the weather. They'll also take note of any containers nearby that might hold other pieces of evidence like trash cans and ashtrays. They'll document and analyze any blood spillage or spatter, noting the shape and flow of patterns of the blood. The medical examiner will also have to be careful to keep track of any assignments they've made to other team members, such as doing a walkthrough of the scene or collecting evidence. Only once the scene has been thoroughly investigated and described does the medical examiner turn their attention to the body itself. They'll create a highly detailed victim description that outlines the physical conditions of the body at the death scene, noting important things like the body's position, any rigor mortis or death stiffness, and the level of decomposition. Generally, the more contorted the position of the body, the more sudden the death was. The victim may have literally fallen in their tracks. They will carefully photograph the body in the position it was found before carefully moving it into a face-up position and beginning a head-to-toe examination. Starting from the top and working their way down, the examiner will push aside clothing without removing it to carefully check every inch of the body for any visible wounds or bruising, the presence or absence of clothing, jewelry, or identification. The most important goals of this preliminary examination is to establish a working theory of the cause of death and to determine if the death occurred at the same location that the body was found. Once the death scene investigation is complete, the medical examiner is also responsible for preparing the body and overseeing the transportation of the corpse to the mortuary for the autopsy itself, while ensuring the least possible disturbance or loss of evidence. They'll place and secure bags over the deceased's hands, feet, and head, and place the body into a bag to retain any evidence like loose fibers as it's being transported to the morgue in a hearse. The autopsy itself usually takes only between two and four hours to perform, but it can take up to six weeks for the results to be ready. Yet another misconception from TV where we've come to expect the entire investigation to be neatly wrapped up within the timeline of a 60-minute episode. Autopsies are best performed within 24 hours of death before the organs begin to deteriorate. But even autopsies performed on decomposed or exhumed bodies can still provide vital new information. The autopsy itself starts with yet another careful inspection of the body. Something else we don't see much of on TV are the many, many layers of duplication and redundancy that go into a real-life investigation. The medical examiner will carefully weigh and measure the body and document its characteristics like age, gender, and hair and eye color. Once the clothing has been removed, they'll examine the body yet again, this time looking for trace evidence, signs of injury like bruising, scratches, or wounds, and identifying marks like tattoos or scars. An x-ray may be done to look for any broken bones, skeletal abnormalities, or to locate bullets lodged in the body. The medical examiner will meticulously record all the findings on both a body diagram and in recorded verbal notes. Once the outside of the body has been thoroughly examined, it's time for the internal exam. The dissection starts with making a large Y-shaped incision on the torso from the shoulders to the mid-chest and all the way down to the pelvic region, then a saw is used to cut through the cartilage and the rib cage to expose the internal organs. The organs are first examined and documented in place, and then removed one by one to be weighed and carefully inspected. Tissue samples may be taken along with blood and urine samples to be tested for drugs or infections. The stomach is also emptied so the contents can be examined and tested. Next, the examiner makes a precise incision around the back of the head from ear to ear and pulls the skin forward to expose the skull. A specially designed saw is used to open the cranium without damaging the soft brain tissue below. The skull cap is removed, and finally, gingerly, the medical examiner removes the brain for closer inspection and further testing. After carefully preserving and cataloging the various tissue and organ samples, the organs are carefully set back into place in the body after being sealed in bags to prevent leakage. The rest of the body cavity is stuffed with wool. The rib cage is set back in place, and the large incision is sewn back up using the characteristic baseball stitch so famous from the big screen. 
Finally, the body is carefully washed and prepared to be delivered to the funeral home. The professional who performs the autopsy undertakes their work with the utmost care and respect, so even a body that has undergone a thorough autopsy can still be presented in an open casket to allow friends and family to see their loved one one last time. With the crime scene thoroughly investigated and the autopsy carefully performed, the medical examiner will use their mountains of documentation, their copious notes and voice recordings, their carefully drawn sketches, the countless crime scene photographs and video, the test results, and more to prepare their official report on the cause and manner of death. This report will be used by investigators to hopefully solve the crime and get justice for the victim. But unlike in the TV shows, this process can take months or even years, if it even gets solved at all. Thanks to the CSI effect, we seem to expect crime scene investigation to be like what we see on TV, but real life is not as flashy, as exciting, or nearly as fast. It is every bit as impressive, though. The medical examiner plays a key role in the investigation from the very first moment that the body is found, right up until the body is sewn back together and prepared for the funeral home. The examiner oversees the investigation of the crime scene, completes the crime autopsy, and it's hard to imagine how real life CSI could solve murders without them. If you thought this video was fascinating, be sure to check out our other videos like this one called What Happens When You Dig Up a Body, or perhaps you'll like this other video instead. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.